Hello and welcome back. Uh, today, today is going to be a little bit of a, a tough video. Um, I went out and I actually purchased the new Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. Here it is in the, the bottle. Here's what the box looks like, not the PR package, which is what you know, a lot of we've been seeing online, but it's a pretty box. It's like kind of an iridescent purple color with the silver. Um, so I'm gonna test this out and we're gonna see how it works. And then I just, I have a lot of thoughts about this foundation and about the launch of the foundation in particular. And so I, I just, you know, I'm putting it out there. I am multiracial, my family. You know, my, my mother is white, Caucasian, um, from East, Western European descent. My father is black, he's from Somalia, and so I am I am mixed race. I am proud to be mixed race. I am so happy because of my heritage. I love both sides equally, and I just, I feel like it has really made me who I am. And so I think because of that, I'm sort of uniquely positioned in order to speak on, on this topic of the, uh, the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation launch. So if you are interested in seeing how the foundation ended up looking on me, if you want to hear my thoughts about the launch, the foundation, the company, all that good stuff, then keep on watching. Okay, so let's just move on and actually get into the demoing of the product. So this is what it looks like in its packaging. I got two shades. They actually call them blends, uh, not shades. So I got blend 3.20 and 3.25. So from the Sephora website, there are, it says there are 32 shades. Um, 3.2 is described as medium plus with warm yellow undertones. And 3.25 is described as the medium plus with neutral undertones. Um, and I'm just gonna say like this, I had so much difficulty trying to find the shade. Um, so I really, I really hope that one of these two is actually going to work. Um, yeah, because when it, so I bought this on the day that it launched and I wanted to go, I usually like to try to get foundations in store if you can, just so you can like, you know, actually test it on your skin and see if it's gonna work. But when I tried to buy it on the day it launched and even still today, it's been about a week since it launched and I had this, you know, shipped to me and everything. There, it's not available in stores like at all within a hundred miles of Los Angeles or even, I also checked my address in Colorado, like at home and it's not available in stores at all. So I hope, I hope this matches. I hope one of these work. If not, maybe we can mix them. They look, they look so like light. So I'll go ahead and actually open them up. Um, and while I do that, I'll read a little bit about what the foundation is supposed to do. They say it is full coverage. It's supposed to be for all skin types. So oily combination, um, sensitive and normal skin types. They say it is a weightless liquid whip foundation with a multi-dimensional velveteen matte finish that wears for up to 24 hours. With bare skin feel yet completely full coverage, this revolutionary weightless whipped liquid glides and bounces easily so it never looks cakey or fake, no matter how little or how much you apply. Developed with exclusive high-speed hyper-whip technology, this silky smooth formula is whisked into a light as air texture for unparalleled buildability. And available in 32 blends, this full coverage foundation dresses not only just tone, but also skin texture, so your complexion looks smooth and even. I mean, we all want that, sounds great. Best of all, it leaves skin looking picture perfect in IRL and on screen. So it sounds really good. Um, it's forty dollars, and you get one fluid ounce. So you know, pretty much the standard standard amount. Throw in the boxes. Okay. So here, here's the actual bottle. Everyone has seen. It's really interesting. It has like this little indent in the shape of the beauty blender. Um, and honestly, 
it is exactly what I feared when I was trying to order these online. Um, they look exactly the same. <laughs> Can you see that? I guess this one is slightly darker than this, this one. A little bit, maybe. What color is that? Okay, so that is 3.25 and this one's 3.2. But, man, they look so similar. And this is why I had so much trouble trying to figure out like what found it, like which one to get. Cause I was just like looking and I was like flipping back and forth between the pictures and there were so many different, like just tracking from the swatches it looked one way but then if you looked at like the you know the pictures of the people wearing the foundation it looked a different way and I just was like I don't know I I don't know so I guess let's just get into it and um and see I'm gonna try swatching both so you have to like un unlock it and then the little button is just like flush with the top so I'm gonna swatch I don't know if you have to shake them I'll shake them a little bit so I'm going to swatch the, the lighter one first. This is 3.2, which is supposed to be slightly warmer toned. Let's see. Oh, there. Oh, okay. Look, man. Look him out. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit came out. Let's just try swatching to see how this matches. Oh, it looks really light. Hmm. Yeah. That looks quite light. I don't know. I don't know about that man. I don't know, but the others that were darker than this, they looked, looked way too dark. There wasn't really, for a medium plus, kind of went from, again, from like really light to either really dark fast. All right, so this is 3.25, this is the neutral. Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe that one it still looks kind of light. But maybe I can make it work. Yeah, because this looks a little yellow. Like, in real life especially, it's coming off quite yellow. This one looks a little better. All right, so I guess I'll try 3.25. So I already primed the rest of my face. Let me just reapply a little bit on this side that got wiped away. I'm going with my Hourglass Mineral Veil. I already used my Becca um, Mattifying Primer and my Tarte Clean Slate Pore Filling. So, all right. Um, so it kind of, when it squirts out, it, it like runs down. So this is 3.25. So let me put a little bit more you see how like it comes out and so it kind of like gives you like a little surface to work on so since it's the beauty blender foundation I guess I will go in with a beauty blender um, and and give it a try so I'm gonna go in just using the base and kind of bounce it in and then just put it on and see what happens. Okay. Oh, be good if I blended my primer in. Yeah, this is light. This is very light. <laughs> hmm. I yeah, I need to blend this down my neck because you as you can see, like this is just way too light for me. <laughs> Yeah, this is just way, way, way too light. Um, okay. So 
I used up everything that I had on here. Um, if I think it looks like it's pretty good coverage. It's not full coverage at all. Like I have like a freckle, a couple freckles right here, and you can still see them. Um, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can in the camera, but I can still see them in person looking in my mirror. So it's not full coverage. I'd say this is more of like a, a medium full coverage. It's definitely given some coverage. I, I mean, I like it. I like. I don't know if I would try to build this up anymore. It's definitely canceled out any kind of like discoloration. It's evened my skin tone. It's evened my skin tone to a totally just like wrong, wrong color. It just looks very odd. Um, I have a little bit of the yellower color. This is the 3.2 left, so I'm just going to use it and see if maybe I can bring a little bit of more life back in since I already pumped it out testing it, so let's try. I'm testing to see if I can build up the coverage and actually, you know, cover up some of my freckles. No, well, some of these, these, the smaller ones are, but the big freckles still, still there. Yeah, this is about three layers. My, the largest freckle is still showing through in this one. So it is not full coverage. Um, it's not gonna be the same as, say, the Huda Beauty, that's like literally like paint on a canvas, or even like the Urban Decay All Nighter, those are very, very full coverage. This is not actually full coverage because you can see my freckles like through my face. It's evened out my, you know, it's, it's canceled out redness. It's canceled out, you know, some of the discoloration that I have on my face. It's given me a totally like white, masky, kind of ill looking complexion. but it's not full coverage because you can still see my freckles. So that's kind of not quite true. I, I like this. I like a more medium full coverage. This is supposed to be medium plus. I don't know what medium plus means. Like, I, I, what is that? What does that term even mean? I don't understand. So now that it's on, it has kind of dried down. It's still slightly, slightly tacky, but I would say it is kind of a velvety finish. Um, it feels super lightweight on the skin. Like I don't really notice that I'm wearing any foundation. So I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do the rest of my makeup, like the, the way that I normally do using my go-to concealers, my like same old powders, just the rest of my normal routine and just kind of see how this works to, as a base and have everything else layer on top of it. Um... The finish looks really nice, except that this is just a thousand percent my wrong color. Like, I tried to blend it out my neck, but even you can see that, like, it's just there's a vast difference between what's going on in my face and what my actual color is. <sighs> yeah. 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 Okay. So I am back. I went ahead and finished up the rest of my makeup, did contour, highlight. I kind of went a little crazy with the highlight. Um, you know, I've done, done everything. I think, look, I, yeah, the foundation performs like a foundation should. It, it looks fine. Um, I did notice when I was doing my lipstick, like looking up close, there was some Not a ton, but there was a little bit of cracking. Just a little bit. And this has not really been on my face for that long. And I still think looking in the monitor, it looks a little light. I bronzed my entire face. So I went in with the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer, because this is actually, it's a little bit light on me, and just bronzed my entire face with it. And then went in with my like warmer contour and my cool tone contour and actually contoured, but I bronzed my entire face because I was like, I just look like a, a weird, a weirdo ghost. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it's not looking that great. So I, I had to, I definitely had to, had to do that. Um, so now that I have the foundation on, 
and I just I, I wanna I wanna say a little a little bit about about Beauty Blender, about the foundation, about the launch, and about inclusivity. And so basically, I, so I, I did some research and I have my notes because I don't I don't want to misspeak, and I, I don't want to you know say the wrong thing. But I I think that I have something to say, and I think I should say it. So now having tried the foundation out, having tried it, having it on my face, I I think I, I want I, I I need to say something about the foundation and about inclusivity. Like oh my gosh, I don't know what this is difficult for me. <laughs> this is difficult. This is really difficult to talk about. It's talking about race and talking about inclusivity can be a difficult like touchy subject for a lot of people but i think these are important conversations that we need to be having in our society because if people aren't talking about these things then nothing's going to change nothing's going to change at all so we've heard a lot from you know but people on both you know the very light end of the spectrum and people from the very dark end of the spectrum feeling like they were left out of this launch which is what happens a lot of the time in the beauty industry so I, I am, I'm brown. I'm brown skin. I'm in the middle. I'm always just kind of in the middle of the foundation range. And so personally, I have never had an experience where I couldn't find a shade that works for me. I just haven't. And so I will never know what that is like to just feel so excluded from the beauty industry. Now, I am mixed race. My father is black. He's from Somalia. And my mother's white. She's of Western European roots primarily. So I am supposedly the target market for this product, according to the statement that Beauty Blender had put out. They said they were making this foundation for the people in the middle who have trouble finding their undertones, which is me. Um, I am have just recently <laughs> discovered that I'm actually more, I lean more neutral than I really do like a warm undertone. And, but the thing is, I still have like a touch of like warm undertone to my skin. So often if I do go with like the totally neutral undertone, um, I look a little bit washed out. But if I pick the more warm colored foundation, it makes me look really yellow. And you know, like I have a little bit of jaundice or something going on, like I don't, I'm not eating my vegetables. So I understand the statement and I wanna actually read it. And I wanna read because I think there's some interesting things that Beauty Blender is saying. Um, in their statement. So with all the controversy, I think it's important that we go to the source. So I'm going to read, this is a statement that was put out by Beauty Blender um, in relation to their foundation launch. So they said, we truly want everyone to find their perfect match. So to ensure this, we put our shades to the test against some of the most inclusive on the market. While the range goes, goes both very light as well as very dark, we have the most shades in what we call our medium plus range. This was created specifically for people of multicultural backgrounds as they have the hardest time finding the right shade to match their undertone. Our founder, Rayanne Silva, is not only Latina, but a professional makeup artist who has always worked with women of color throughout her 30 year career. Those with tan, deep, and dark tone skin tones understand that finding the right color foundation is all about matching your undertone, and this is where Rayanne saw the biggest hole in the market for women like herself and her multicultural family. So, first off, there's a lot there's a lot of things that I want to say about that statement. So. It's just interesting that they say those with tan, deep, and dark skin tones understand that finding the right color foundation is about matching your undertone. I'm sorry, what about what about light colored skin tones? What about medium colored skin tones? That's just how it works. When you're trying to find a complexion product that matches your skin, it's all about finding your found it's about finding the undertone. It's not just about finding the, the general range, it's finding the undertone. So I, I think one that's weird that they only choose to talk about tan, deep, and dark skin tones. I, I think they called out those three to try to boost the inclusivity, but inclusivity goes across the board. You know, you can't go super dark in your skin tone but completely leave out people in the lighter range and say you're inclusive. 
people are people, no matter the skin tone, and you have to include everyone in order to be truly, truly, truly inclusive. Um, and also, here's the thing with the the idea of this medium plus range and the idea that they're putting the most colors in that medium plus range. I don't think you need to. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come straight out and say it. So I am in the medium plus range. The two colors that I got were both from the medium plus range. I got 3.2 and 3.25. Yes, they were both too light for me. They were the wrong shade color, but how are you supposed to know? So you added all these extra skin tones or skin ranges in this, the shade that, what does medium plus even mean? Because I, I, that definition is that term is not used in the rest of the beauty industry so really like what does that even mean it's just like it, it's just a term that you say but like it doesn't mean anything because you don't have anything else to like base it off of you know like with other foundation ranges they have medium they have tan they have deep they have light they have fair like they have this like this set um you know, vernacular that is understood within the community and when you add this new term like medium plus like what does that mean? Great, I guess I'm medium plus. But then here's the other thing. You're adding all these other skin tones or these other ranges, but it doesn't, it, it just, it makes it more difficult to find your your color, to be completely honest. So I'm gonna pull up this Sephora website. And cause I was like, okay, I bought the color 3.2, which is described as medium plus with warm yellow undertones. I also bought 3.25, which is medium plus with neutral undertones. So both of these colors were too light for me. It was too light, I but I didn't know. And so how are you supposed to like, this is, this is the picture. This is the 3.25, medium plus. I mean, doesn't she look, she looks kinda like me, right? I don't know, how are you supposed, how are you supposed to tell if this is gonna match you from this? I don't know. It's too hard because I couldn't find it online. But like, I was like, oh yeah, she she looks kind of like me. But no, it was too light. So the other colors, they have 3.35, medium plus with warm yellow undertones. They have medium plus with warm red undertones. 3.45, medium plus with neutral undertones. I probably should have been medium plus with neutral undertones, which is just the darker color of the medium 3.25, which is what I got. But Honestly, the definition on the Sephora app where you buy the foundation is exactly the same. 3.25, medium plus with neutral undertones. 3.45, medium plus with neutral undertones. That's the exact same definition, so it, it, it doesn't mean anything and it makes it so much more difficult when everything is called medium plus. You know, if like the 3.25 was medium plus with warm, with neutral undertones, but really it's more of like a light medium where 3.45 is gonna be more of like a tan medium. You need to say that, first of all. And then like, look, here's the, this is the woman that they have for 3.45. Do I look like her? I don't know, maybe, It kind of, but I kind of look like the other lady too. So like how, how are you really supposed to know? And then all of the foundations, all of these pictures, they all look the same. Even in real life, they look the same. They all look the same. So if you're gonna spend your time and your money, because de developing foundation is a very expensive, time-consuming process. If you're gonna spend the time trying to create all these different undertones for people, you need to do it for everybody. So also looking just like at all of the different foundation shades, like and counting them all, there are 14 different shades in this medium plus category. There are seven in the deep category, which honestly, they're not even really that deep. The 4.1 is not, is not that dark. And then you have six, I believe, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, you have six in the light category. One, two, three, four, five. And five in the quote unquote medium category. So I don't understand why you think that only people with this medium plus definition of skin tones 
is going to have the difficulty of finding finding their shade. So yeah, I, 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 I get it. As someone who is mixed race, and also here I want to say something about that. So I, I just finished my master's degree um, in cinema media studies, and one of my research topics is studying mixed race and multiracial representations in the media. And I think a lot of it, you have to understand the terminology. And in today's society, I, 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 there's a lot of fear, I think, of, of saying the wrong thing and, you know, getting in, tr in trouble because you used the wrong term or you said the wrong thing and there's this pressure to always be, you know, so politically correct. But here's, here's another thing that I want to pick apart in the statement. They talk about how Ray Ann Silva is multicultural and has a multicultural family. When really what I think they meant to say and probably would have been more accurate is saying she's maybe multiracial and has a multiracial family. Because honestly, multicultural culture is not equated with race. And so culture does not equate to skin tone. And I think that's what they're trying to say in this statement. And it's, it's inaccurate and it's actually quite damaging. So someone who can be multicultural, so take my mother for example, she's Caucasian, she is white, and she is 100% European. 100% European descent. We did like the, 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 you know, the cheek swab for the genetics test. But, you know, her family is German, English, she has a little Iberian Peninsula, so Spain and Portugal, and she has some Eastern European. All four of the, the main areas where her family is from are different culturally. German is not the same culture as English. You know, Eastern European is not going to be the same culture as Spanish. So my mother, she comes from a multicultural family, but racially all Caucasian. So that is, so culture does not play into skin color. Race, race and skin color are genetics. And I think people are worried to say the word race because it can be a hot topic issue. But when we're talking about foundation, we're talking about complexion products, it's genetics. It's genetics, it's our race that determines what our skin looks like. And people of all colors are beautiful, but it's genetics. Culture is language, it is traditions, it is, you know, food, it is clothing, it is all of the other things that make a culture or a people special and unique that is apart from race. Um, even, I mean, looking, my father's from Somalia. Somali culture is very, very different than looking at like a Western African, you know, a Western African culture or even looking at, you know, African American. So growing up, I had never had soul food before because that is a African American cultural, I, part of their cultural identity where I would eat, you know, goat and rice with my father and my Somali relatives. And so culture, again, does not equate to skin color. And so by saying that they are trying to in be inclusive of all cultures, really she's being trying to be inclusive of her family and her friends is what Rayanne is doing with Beauty Blender, which is fine, but like just say it like it is. And that's the part I think that really frustrates me and I think frustrated a lot of other people is that by using these words like oh, we're being multicultural and we're trying to really speak to people finding their undertones and we really want to, you know, speak to a mark a, par a portion of the market that's not been included before which one is wrong because I'm the target market I am multiracial multicultural whatever have trouble finding my undertone but I still have always been able to find a foundation that works for me so th that's the thing is the, the language that they're using in beauty blender is trying to like give off the impression that they're being so inclusive when really they're not they're not, they're not being any better than some of these other brands that are putting out like 12 foundation shades. And so the standard has been set in the industry. Brands like Makeup Forever and Fenty and Cover Effects, they are truly being inclusive and they are, they're making sure that everyone is being, is feels like they can find their shade and is being spoken to within the industry. And so Beauty Blender, it, they dropped the ball. And they, they drop the ball big time. And I think it's fine if you want, if you feel that there is a, a gap in the industry for all of these undertones in the middle, 
even though I personally think it just makes it more difficult. But if you feel like there's a, there's a gap, great. Have at it. Spend the time. Really make sure you get that right. But you know what? You cannot just leave off the ends. Like the people on the sides of the spectrum also matter. And that's the thing. Like you can't be truly inclusive unless you include everybody. And we need to speak up. The people who, yes, ostensibly can find my shade. Like I, yeah, I picked the wrong ones. Maybe there's a shade for me. I don't know. I'm not going to try again until everybody can find their shade in this foundation. Because if like my super pale skin sisters and my like super dark, beautiful chocolate sisters can't find their shades, then why do I get to wear this and they don't? It's just, it's not, it doesn't work right. That's not how we want the world to be. And so I think it's time that everybody stands up and says that like, we need to change. We need to change as a society. We need to uh, appreciate beauty in all shapes, forms, colors, sizes. Like Max says, all, rage, all ages, all races, all sexes. Everybody is beautiful. And we need to make sure that everyone can find the right foundation shade. So yeah, I know that was a lot. Um, I. I <laughs> I mean, maybe you don't feel the same and that's fine, but I, I just think it was important that being someone that they say that they are marketing this foundation to, that I speak up and actually say something about it because what Beauty Blender doing, whatever they've done with this foundation, it's not inclusive. They haven't been inclusive and until they are inclusive, I think we need to call them out on it because it's not good enough. And until everyone can find their shade, it's never going to be good enough. So that is my review on the Beauty Blender Foundation. Uh, I'm going to be taking them back. I'm going to return both of them because I don't want to have to wear this much bronzer in order to get a foundation that matches me. You know, it's just, it was a little too much work and a little too much bronzer all over the face. And I, I don't want to have to do that. Um, also, everyone is talking about how we get such a cool design. It's kind of like a mess. Like, let's be real. Like, yeah, I guess it's better than putting it on my hand. But I wash my hands anyways after I do my makeup. So putting it on the actual, like, bottle, it, it's just... It's just more messy and I have to use like a makeup wipe. Otherwise I can just wash my hands with some soap and clean it. Otherwise I have to like actually get a makeup wipe and waste, it's more waste for the environment to use these makeup wipes all the time. When before, if I just put it on the back of my hand, after I'm done washing my makeup, I wash my hand and we're done. Now I have to get like a makeup wipe and clean it off. And so I don't know if this is really the most Everyone's been talking about how great and how innovative it is. Oh, it's such a cool design. Um, it's different. It is innovative. I don't think it's the greatest design ever. Honestly, I don't know if I were to find my right shade or to keep this foundation. I don't know that I actually would, um, would use it like they intended. But anyways, that being said, um, both these shades are going back and... I'm gonna hope that somehow, some way, the message is finally going to get through. That if enough people can say it and say it loudly enough, that things will actually start to change and that we will see more inclusivity because everyone is beautiful. And I think that's the most important thing that we should keep in mind, that everyone is beautiful. And until we change that in the industry, we have a long ways to go. So. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry if I was rambling a little bit, but I had things to say and I thought it was important to say it. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.